speech zone i'm ian con um we're talking this week about the uh third installment of the round of 32 big old episode this week eight eight, eight <laughs> controversial matches not all of them controversial but there's enough controversy in two or three of them to uh, to make up for all the rest i'm sure you sure you'll agree by the end of this podcast um yeah so firstly an admission a complete turnaround look i hammerbots didn't they have a big week uh yeah, I, I've been wrong before, and heck, Hammerbot's really, uh, pff, I'm a believer. What can I say? Well, I don't know if I'm a believer. Once some vertical spinners get in the mix, I don't know if this is going to work out. Um, but we'll see how it works out. Uh, yeah, but speaking of which, so yeah, it was, well, it was Beta and Chomp this week that, that got into it. It was, um, I don't know, both of which I really said, this is not going to work. I said very specifically. I yeah. Anyway. On to the first one, round one, Overhaul versus Beta. So, um, aside from the Hammerbot situation, um, Beta was just better driven, wasn't it? It just really was all around the the arena this week. Um, uh, It was lower than Overhaul as well. That was another massive factor in this. Um, Overhaul just couldn't get that weapon under even if it it wanted to. Um, And yeah, so, I don't know. It was... uh, it was some excellent driving and excellent weapon timing as well from Beta. That was the big thing. I mean, it's easy to say, oh, I was driving well, but then if you don't actually put the weapon, if you don't use the weapon at the right time and account for any uh, latency in the system, including swinging the damn hammer, um, then of course that doesn't do well for the driving either. I mean, the driving's pretty pointless unless you can get into position to use the weapon. That's what the driving's for. Um, so he did that, and he did it perfectly. Um, those last hits that actually disabled overhaul, those really did come up to uh, just the perfect spot. Now, I'm not 100% sure uh, what's in that area in overhaul, um, but I would hazard a guess that it, uh, it's uh, PWM controllers or the, the motor speed controllers for the brushless motors. Now, we'll get to talking about that later on, but uh, yeah, they, they don't make a ruggedized one. Anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, he, he got perfectly in there. Once he got in there, the thing didn't really move again. But I will say, I'm fairly certain that from about a minute onwards, there were a couple of hits in and around a minute, that Overhaul's bottom jaw was able to work from that point on, but its top jaw didn't move at all. So I would hazard that it's, even though it looked like its main weapon was working, its main weapon wasn't even working from a minute onwards, Overhaul. So it really, it was only ever going to try and push... Uh, beat her into uh, some hazards, but that certainly didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, it was really good to see his emotion at the end, wasn't it? It was so good to just, and for her to pick up on it, and you know, it was great. It was, um, people do put a lot into these machines, and the idea that he's not sponsored, or he's certainly mostly sponsored by himself, and how much of his own money he's put into it, that's a big factor. These aren't cheap, these things. And um, yeah, that shows a commitment that, uh, you know, you talk the wife into it. <laughs> that's a big score, man. You know, the uh, wife approval factor, that's a huge, uh, huge factor in people's uh, hobbies. It really is. Hey, I'd like to go skydiving. Whatever. I just, I'm not prepared to have that conversation with her at this point, you know? I, I could go skydiving. But for those of you who haven't been married or who have been unsuccessfully married terribly, I mean, I, who am I to speak? But uh, those of you who haven't been married... You can you could go skydiving. I could go skydiving, but I'd have to give up something more important later on, perhaps. And my knees aren't great, so I mean now's not my t- chance to go skydiving. So it's this whole idea of hey, look, I could I could have whatever I want, but now I have you know what I mean. Right now we're at a good little equilibrium. Nobody's too unhappy. It's great. <laughs> it's the best thing you can hope for in a marriage. In the end, yeah. So Beta had it. Um, not my pick, as I said last week. I uh, I picked Overhaul, but. Uh, Wrong. Round two. The Rake. Hypershock versus Warrior Clan. Now, the Rake. The Reddit lit up, man. Though. Okay. Never mind all of the, uh, never mind all of the, uh, the maybes and the thises and the thats about, hey, it could have been a big payoff or, you know, a terrible idea. The audacity of not it being a custom-designed object. It's a rake. You <laughs> got an actual rake. That is just ass, man. That is, like, 
Australian ass. Like you're being arsy about it. You know what I mean? Not saying he's an asshole. That was just, I mean, ballsy is probably the more appropriate American way to put it. But uh, it carries with it a connotation of sort of um, uh, audaciousness as well as bravery. Um, so yeah, I would call that pure ass. You know, um, incredible work. If uh, if he did manage to get flipped over. Um, that was something that Kenny mentioned that uh, this may have affected his ability to self right I don't know. I think the right the Ray could have <laughs> flipped him over just as easily. I think he probably would have had the uh, the torque in that arm and would have considered that before he fitted such a long rake. Um, he the gentleman knows what he's doing, um, knows how to work a calculator. I would say, and so he would have figured out if, whether or not that would have worked and based the length of the rake on that. Just a guess. Um, but yeah, look, I, uh, <laughs> I, I was really shocked that the, uh, f- uh, the driving of uh, Warrior Clan, um, look, I don't know if they had a problem with their, their main weapon, the flipper. Well, it's hard to say what the main weapon is, isn't it? With a full body rotating situation, their, their, their vertical spinner. Um, but the flipper, anyway, um, if it was working, I counted three good occasions. There they are. Isn't it? There it is. And there it is. Um, yeah, three good occasions where uh, Ori Clan could have flipped uh, Hypershock very easily. It seemed very easily. I don't know. Maybe there was some reason he couldn't. Um, but yeah, I uh, I would have been very, very intrigued to see what would happen if uh, Hypershock got flipped over on its back with that rake there. But I guess we won't find out. Um, yeah. Uh, look, Will Bales just outdrove him, didn't he? He absolutely was literally running circles around him. He was running circles around him. He was fanging like he was doing Tokyo Drift shit in the arena. I was amazed. I was really... Mm, that was good. Amazing driving. But yeah, the rake. And then he came in for that massive hit with the drum spinner on the drone. It's just this unnecessary hit. It was like the main body's still there trying to get you. I'll get you. <laughs> such, such ballsy arsiness. I just, I'm really starting to like Will. I really am. He's, uh, he's starting to be one of my favorite guys in this competition. He's... Uh, um, but yeah, the the rake is exactly the sort of thing why I like to see custom weapons in this. Um, like, I mean, I did bitch about uh, Warrior Cl- um, Ghost Raptor last year being able to just not have a main weapon after the first round, I believe it was. Um, and he just, uh, he essentially came straight in and just started making modifications and pushing people around and he got a bit of a distance with that. But I don't know, I like the uh, the ability to, to work on the fly and to uh, to change your your weapons tactics uh, based on who the opponent is. That makes it a much more interesting game. Um, And yeah, so I don't know. We'll get to apparently why that doesn't seem to fit with BattleBot's agenda later on when we talk about Brutus versus Lockjaw because Brutus versus Lockjaw, oh my God, (whistles) the controversy. Um, Yeah, so anyway, that one went to Hypershock as I picked. And yeah, it was... uh, I, I don't know. I didn't think it was a terribly controversial pick to choose Hypershock, but we'll see how far Hypershock gets. Um, so, round three. Stinger versus Megatento. Look, I, uh, I, uh, I, I didn't remember who I picked for this one, so I actually had to look back on last week's video. And I didn't make a pick, because <laughs> I couldn't make a pick. That said, I have some thoughts on the way it was judged. I know that Stinger couldn't flip... Uh, Megatento, because Stinger's got a short wheelbase, you know what I mean? It's a tiny little thing. Center of gravity's right up near the fulcrum of, of the flipper. Not much you can do about that. And, I mean, Megatento's just quite a long, big shell having... She makes big bots. What are you going to do? Um, so, yeah, there was no way he was going to be able to flip her. But the control thing... Now, I think he lost points, he must have lost points, for if he went to try and flip her but was unable to flip her. Somehow that seems to have not counted for control. Um, Because, yeah, I mean, her main weapon wasn't doing any damage to him. His main weapon wasn't really able to flip her, but she wasn't really pushing him around very much. I don't know. I don't know. He got heaps of hits with fire, though, didn't he? I mean, does the fire count for hits? It should. Are we not looking at all of those times that he was, like, spraying her bot with fire? Internally as well? In that shell? I mean, that's a ballsy move. I, no one's really seemed to, to pick up on the fact that inside that shell, 
I heard a lot of, oh, you should have kept the fire going inside the shell. No, man, like, it gets hot in there. And none of her working electronic components are inside that shell. But you are. Your own bodies. You know, so you're trying to be in there, pushing around, trying to get in and out of this thing. And she's just like, yeah, it might melt, but it'll melt on you. And the temperature in there will be so high before it melts. Like that, the air temperature, those lithium polymers, man, they're not going to like that. None of your bot's going to like that. And it's all, you know. So, yeah, I understand completely just how how cautious you'd have to be and how cautious, how good it was of him to be that cautious. But in the end, it probably cost him the match. If he just kept the fire going in there, you know, maybe his bot would have caught on fire, maybe not. But uh, he didn't win in the end. Um, So, yeah, I I just... Losing the wheel didn't help him, obviously, because that was one of the main shots that, uh, that Megatento got on Stinger. That said, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't uh, envy the judges. I sympathize very heavily. Um, I wouldn't have liked to have to try and pick one, and no one was going to be happy. It wasn't the sort of match where if you pick one, then, hey, look, here we go, flip a coin. Uh, it's not much good. But, hey, Mika Tinto is into the uh, round of the Sweet 16. Brings us to round four. Nightmare versus Ice Wave. <laughs> oh, I swear, what'd you do to me, man? What'd you do to me? I believed in you. I believed in you, man. I need a minute. I just need a minute. Okay, I think I'm ready. Come on. Anyway, <laughs> fucking nightmare is the top fucking seed. Are you fucking for real? Have you lost it, man? Anyway, still in the competition. Still in the competition. Um, yeah, I can't, uh, I can't argue with the fact he's still in the competition. And uh, heck, I mean, there they go. You yeah. know, he got torn apart, didn't he? He really got torn apart. Uh, what can you do? What can you do with a drunken sailor? Indeedy, deedy. So Nightmare won it. Uh, that puts Nightmare up against Beta next round. But we'll go through what's going to happen next round at the end of this. But uh, but yeah, should, that should be an interesting one. Um, yeah. Anyway, brings us to round five. Uh, Brutus versus Lockjaw. Now this is the upset. The Well, it's not an upset. It's exactly how I called it. Um, it's the, I don't know, a shocking judge's decision. It really, I don't know. I would have been very happily wrong to see Lockjaw win this. Um, Donald Hudson... Hudson, I should say. Um, he he perfectly, perfectly drove his bot. It was it did perfectly. His strategy was perfect. His tactics were perfect, and he should have won. Now, there's a lot of talk on the Reddit about uh, he should have. You know, he didn't play to the rules. The rules say that if you um, if you're just being defensive, that doesn't count as a hit. So that armor on the back. Even when Brutus was coming in, trying and attempting to get hits, but the shape of his bot meant that armor was just, you know, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect from Donald. Um, But apparently each of those counted for hits for Brutus. Look, I really like Adam Berku. I think um, I think it was a great bot, and I was actually quite sad to see these guys come up against each other. I would have, um, you know... It would have been good to see them both progress. Um, but, hey, look, at someone had to win. I just think that it should have been bloody Lockjaw. What, what should he have done? Now, he was perfectly defensive for the entire first part of the match. Um, Lockjaw was running around doing... I'm sorry, Brutus was running around. It was doing burnouts. Those weren't um, motors burning out or anything like that. Those are the tires on the floor of the battle box getting hot enough to do burnouts all over the place. Um, so, I mean, that was incredible. I mean, a great little bot, but he wasn't really able to push Lockjaw around. Lockjaw just had him and and kept him, kept bouncing on him and drove him around him, couldn't do him any damage. Then, when Brutus's weapon started to fail, or when the, um, the, I'd say it was battery started to smoke, um, and he had to back off the weapon, he went, great, now's my chance to strike. He turned around, came in, grabbed him with the pincers, lifted him up, controlled him, went, yep, there you go. It's hard, isn't it? Because that's kind of, 
in a real, if you like, robot war where it was a bit of a free-for-all, how do you design a robot to beat other robots, Donald's my man. Donald builds a damn good bot. If you very... And he, he kept the wheels away from Brutus. You know how hard that would have been? Man, I know Brutus was... He just kept kind of coming for the frontal. But I don't know. That was, um, that was brilliant driving. Brilliant driving, brilliant tactics, brilliant strategy. Unfortunately, he didn't play to the rules exactly. Um, not to say he didn't play by the rules, but he didn't play to the rules. Um, and it cost him. Um, I can understand why they cut it from the main broadcast though it was a shoving match it's it's such a point, bone of contention about what the rules should be it brings up so many bones of contention about what the rules should be in battle bots um and what kinds of outcomes you get from those rules and sadly i think look i just I don't know, i'd love it if you could have some compromise in the rules that would allow the rake but not i don't know I guess defensive hits have to count as hits for the person, but if his main weapon doesn't... If his, if Brutus's main weapon isn't making contact with Lockjaw, how does that count as a hit? It's just a shove. A shove shouldn't count for much. Certainly a tenth of a hit, perhaps, but not a hit like a hit from the main weapon. Anyway, what are the points? Did Brutus not have a reverse gear, or was he just that keen? Because I didn't actually see it go in reverse. Um, now... My understanding was that reverse with a um, brush, brushless DC motor is simply an implementation of the speed controller. So you simply tell it to send pulses to different um, coils at different times in a different order, in reverse order. Uh, so I can't imagine why he didn't implement a reverse. Uh, it's not like you need a gearbox. So I don't really, I don't fully get that. So I could imagine that he really was just trying to be as aggressive as hell, and I know aggression counts. Maybe that was what won it for him. Maybe the fact that he didn't actually use reverse was a good thing. Um, I don't know. Heck. Uh, but yeah, look, I, I think that uh, I think that this was an odd, an odd choice from the judges. It was a, a split decision, so I don't know. We'll see how we go. But it does bring... It brings up so many issues about the future of robot combat and what we'd all like to see. And there are various camps. Some people think Donald deserved to lose. Lots of people. Lots of people make really good points about the fact that the rules say hits on defensive weapon on, on your um, armor counts against you. So, you know, it's just that definition of what is a hit. That, I think, is the real sticking point. Anyway, that brings us to round six. Bombshell versus Cobalt. Look, I called it for Bombshell. I'm sorry, I called it for Cobalt, but Bombshell got it. Um, more power to him. Look, hey, vertical spinner versus vertical spinner. This was the big the big chance, but the height difference, I, uh, I, would have liked, I, I don't know if they could have come down slightly more because it feels like had they have come down slightly more, they would have been impacting more of the bot than just the tires. But heck, just, just the tires was good enough. You know, that is, it's a, one of those issues with engineering, isn't it? It's, it's never just about, can we build a bot? Anyone can build a bot. Well, not anyone, but you, pretty much anyone could make a bot go, you know, in a way. It's a matter of, can I build a bot that's going to kill another bot? You know, and what are the engineering compromises behind cost and weight and the amount of time and complexity and reliability, all the rest of it. Now, each design has its own set of pros and cons. But of course, one of my favorite things about the vertical spinner design, especially those like Cobalt and, uh, and uh, uh, Tombstone, um, is that they're inherently unflippable. I mean, you can flip them and that doesn't matter. They just keep moving. There's, there's just no problem. It's just they're, they're, um, uh, they're symmetrical about that axis. So that in and of itself is supposed to be a great thing, but there is that little issue of the fact that then the, the tire or the wheel, but the surface that contacts the, uh, the arena has to stick out on both sides and it can't be armored. Well, not readily because any armor could move and bend into the into the tire or into the wheel and then you've got another issue you've got a real issue there you know it's not easy to design around that um and hey bombshell did a wonderful job exploiting that weakness and uh good on him i'd love yeah can't wait to see what happens next week but uh yeah so bombshell got it 
round seven. Bite first, bite force versus ringmaster. Look, um, I think that uh, I think that this was another interesting judge's decision. Um, fair enough, I suppose. Though it's absolutely fair enough that bite force got it. Um, I think that uh, it's hard, isn't it, when both weapons are broken. Um, it, it's not easy to uh, to say who did what. Um, it was a pushing match, and it could have easily been cut from the from the match in favour of the Brutus Lockjaw, um, cut from the the main broadcast. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, this is what happened to uh, to the Ringmaster's main weapon when it got that hit from Bite Force's main weapon. So there you go. That's what that's what a good vertical spinner hit can do to was it aluminium is is that what we're seeing there i think so um so they said they'd be back with a uh, uh with a steel one next year good great love to see them back can't wait to see how that works out um but yeah it's uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting uh way to go about it the big tooth on the the big set of teeth on the inside the uh, inverted sprocket uh or the inverted gear situation that's yeah, um you know it's again it's a major weakness if anything happens to that the entire thing stops working but I mean that's that's one of those issues with engineering there's always always gonna be something brings us to round eight and again wrong on the hammerbot wrong on the hammerbot um big vertical spinner fan but uh once again uh Zoe proved that this thing you know she can build a decent bot you know no one's questioning that I just I don't think it's elegant I know that doesn't matter, but it's a big hulking bit of shit that spends most of its time on its side, you know, with a high center of gravity and smashing itself around. And, uh, but got some good hits on Shredderator. And Shredderator really didn't get that many good hits on it. And those that it did get, they didn't do that much. So that arm is pretty good. So look, it'd be an interesting match, wouldn't it? Um, uh, some other vertical spinner that, uh, like, uh, I mean, a. Uh, I hate to posit it again, but Tombstone versus Chomp. I don't know how good that armor is then. Um, let's see how we go. But uh, yeah, once again, not my pick, but uh, a heck of an interesting pick. Uh, a heck of an interesting match, just the same. Zoe looked positively scared before the match. She really did. She was like really concerned. Um, and uh, I would have been too. I mean, he was talking trash, wasn't he? He really was. Um, and look, I think a lot of the trash talk was justified, except in the end it wasn't. You know what I mean? I would have I would have said much the same stuff, but I probably would have kept it a little bit more to myself, um, depending on whether I'd chosen the Adderall or the medical marijuana in the pits. I mean, I, depends. Can I have both? Can't have both? Shit. Anyway. Yeah, so... Um, Chomp also got stuck in the kill slaw... Kill slaw? I'd like my sandwich with kill slaw. No. <laughs> the uh, part of the... The arm pivot dealy got stuck in the kill saw slot in the uh, in the arena, which was quite interesting. It was a kind of hazard that I don't think was foreseen by the producers necessarily that that a part of a bot could just get wedged in there. So that's quite quite a good move. But yeah, that brings us to the uh, next week's picks. Okay, so Tombstone versus Brutus. Interesting match that's going to be. Interesting match that's going to be. I um, I'm fairly certain that. Uh, that the same issues will apply in that I don't think Brutus will get a shot in. Uh, I just don't think that uh, it's got no way to attack uh, Tombstone. Uh, I think that'll be the the last we see of Brutus, sadly. Um, Yeah, either way, it would have been the end of Lockjaw as well, I'd say, so it kind of makes no difference which one won. Um, Sad to be in that bracket, that end of the bracket, I should say. You know, it's like, what are you going to do? You know? but that said, I mean, good armor. We've seen Tombstone succumb almost to good armor before. Uh, so not much we can do there, but uh, it'll be an interesting match just the same. Nightmare versus Beta. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I think one of the main issues there will be that uh, it will be repairs for Nightmare. It got truly smashed around by Ice Wave today. Um so that'll be one to watch. Uh, I would say that uh, Beat has been on a heck of a run. It's been doing well. So, look, um, I'm going to call it for Beta. I know, right? I can't. I just can't call it for Nightmare, even though it's the first seed. I just. I don't. I don't want to. 
<laughs> anyway, um, Bite, first, Bite Force versus Chomp. Uh, I would, uh, again, it just depends. If Chomp can start getting some good hits, I'm not sure how much armor is up the back of uh, Bite Force. I think there are some, some areas up the back there where if Zoe gets a good hit or two in, we can see some real issues from Bite Force. So I'm going to have to go ahead and yeah, I'm going to pick that one for Chomp. Um, uh, Mega Tento versus Yeti. Um, yeah, uh, I think Yeti's going to tear bits and pieces off Mega Tento. Fist sides, chunks of her bot left, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so I would say that's um, that's almost a foregone conclusion. But, um, but yeah, definitely, definitely Yeti for that one. Bronco versus Razorback. Ah, heck of a match. Bronco versus Razorback. Uh, it just depends what the hell Razorback comes in as. Um, I think that uh, uh, it could be a heck of a flip match, but I don't think Bronco's going to get underneath him easily. Um, call me crazy, but I think that this one's uh, too close to pick, so I'm not going to pick that one. Um, Minotaur versus Warhead. What do you think I think is going to happen? We haven't seen Minotaur for far too long. Three weeks now. Come on. Minotaur. Yeah, Minotaur all the way. Um, there may be a few bits and pieces, uh, you know, bits of damage um, to the sides, especially if um, if they can get into the sides of Minotaur. But um, I would say that as soon as that drum spinner gets in, even if they go spinner to spinner, it's just, uh, I can't see how it's not going to be a terrible decapitation for uh, for Warhead. Anyway, we'll see how it goes, but definitely I'll pick that one for, for Minotaur. Red Devil versus Bombshell. Now that is going to be an interesting match as well. Uh... I would go with Bombshell on previous form. Um, yeah, uh, Red Devil's a heck of a bot, though. Um, and I would say that uh, my understanding is Red Devil actually is uh, almost four bots that each independent part of it um, could have has separate controls, separate motors, separate batteries, separate everything. So you could almost break it in half and have two working bots in a way. Um, not quite, but y you understand my point. Is It's not going to be easy... To, uh, to stop Red Devil. Um, so we'll see how that match goes, but I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i call that one for Red Devil. Um, actually, no, I'll call that one for Bombshell. That's what I'm saying. Call that one for Bombshell, but it's not going to be easy to stop Red Devil. And finally, Poison Arrow versus Hypershock. Um, yeah, Battle of the Drum Spinners again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it for Hypershock just because I'd like to see Hypershock win it. I'd like to see Poison Arrow win it as well. But either way, um, I'd say I'm mostly what I'm going to predict is a heck of a destructive match and something that I can't wait to see. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think Hypershock's a, a very well-engineered bot, and I don't know I can necessarily... Well, I mean, it survived those hits on Son of Waiachi perfectly well. So you, we can say the same thing about Poison Arrow, let's say. But um, yeah, drum spinner on drum spinner. So that's it from us for at the Free Speech Zone. Um, BattleBots uh, will come back next week for the Sweet 16, the first round of the Sweet 16. Uh, and then we'll have another week. And then the fucking Olympics. Okay, the Olympics. God. It's not quite us from the Free Speech Zone. I'm going to tack this on at the end. I lived through the Sydney Olympics. I don't know how many of y'all out there have actually lived through an Olympics. The only good thing I will say about it is because they banned trucks during the day, the streets were deserted it was amazing you could drive wherever you wanted just no traffic virtually it was beautiful but otherwise it's all you hear about the olympics 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 do you give a fuck who javelins the furthest really any other two weeks out of the four year period you give a shit about shot put why does anyone give a shit about shot put ugh battle bots should be at the olympics there should be robot fighting at the olympics no robot pause, no pause in the robot fighting for the Olympics. No, no. Robot fighting at the Olympics. Think about that. See you next week for the Sweet 16. I'm Ian Con. This is the Free Speech Zone.